Hi there, I'm Dylan, and today I'm going to show you five tips for setting up On One Photo Raw. It's very easy to get set up, but there are a few different ways to do it. So to get started, let's go ahead and open up On One Photo Raw, just as you would if you had just downloaded it. When you open up On One Photo Raw, you will always start in the Browse module, which is where you will browse, organize, cull, and manage your photos. At the heart of On One Photo Raw 2018 is a fast browser. Think of it as a supercharged finder or explorer window. This means you don't have to put your photos into On One Photo Raw. You will simply browse to where your photos are stored. So the first tip I'm going to show you is how easy it is to get started by simply browsing to your first photos. There are a few shortcuts to use in Photo Raw to find your photos. For me, browsing to my photos is as easy as inserting my external hard drive. I really just like to use this box here with the external drives. I can simply insert my hard drive into my computer, Photo Raw will detect it, and I can just click on the drive and I can navigate through the folders on it instantly to find whatever image or folder I'm looking for. That is usually how I get to my photos. I realize that other people prefer different methods, so let me show you some other ways to get to your photos. These icons on the left side panel here is where we will start. The first icon of a computer screen will take you to your computer's desktop. Here you can grab photos on your desktop or any images within folders on it. This camera icon is going to open your computer's default pictures folder. The folder with the heart icon here will take you to your catalog folders, which we will get into later in this video. The hard drive icon here will take you to your external drives and SD cards, just like I showed you earlier. The cloud icon will take you to your cloud storage, where you can use Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive to store and manage your photos. The stacked image icon here will show you your albums that you have made in On One Photo Raw. You can also use the different boxes right next to the side panel here to browse for your photos. In this first box, you'll have all of the external disks on or plugged into your computer. Notice how this is the same as the hard drive icon. Below that is your cloud storage. The box below that is where you will find all of the albums you have created. For now, it holds the pre-made ones that came with the software. The next box down is your filter control, where you can search for photos specifically using names, keywords, and ratings. If you would rather import your photos into Photo Raw and apply metadata presets, rename files, edit capture dates, and the like, there's a feature for that option as well. Say you insert an SD card from a recent shoot and want to import the photos onto your computer or a hard drive. First, you want to make sure you have whatever device you have your images stored on inserted and recognized by the computer. Then you can simply head up to File and select Import. When you're in the Import dialog, you can now choose which drive to import from, the location you want to store them, and a lot of other options as well. First thing you'll want to do in Import is you'll want to choose your drive to import from. You can do that by selecting this tab here. If your drives aren't already showing, just simply click Choose, and now you can find whatever drive or folder you need using your Finder window or Windows Explorer. You can also choose what photos you want or don't want to import by checking their boxes. Once you have all of the photos selected you want to import, I would head over to your destination controls. The location control will let you easily choose the folder you want the photos to be imported into. You can even choose a backup folder if you need to. The other boxes are going to give you other controls with importing your photos. You can rename them, add metadata, add styles, or even edit capture dates. Once you have your controls set the way you want, you can hit import, and it will automatically take you to that folder you have imported them into. If you're looking to bring in other photos from other services such as Lightroom or Apple Photos, there are easy ways to do that as well. If you're looking to export your photos from an Apple Photos library, Check out the video I made on On One's YouTube titled How to Export and Organize Apple Photos. If you're trying to migrate your photos from Lightroom, we have a great tool to use called the Lightroom Migration Assistant. I'm not going to show you in depth on how to use the tool, but if you want to find out more in depth on how to use it, I will add a link in the description to it. In Lightroom, once you have your photos organized in your catalog the way you want them, simply go to File, Plugin Extras, and then Migrate Catalog to On One. What this is going to do is it's going to create cataloged folders of your images in Lightroom and transfer them to On One Photo Raw. Note that this can take some time, especially if you have a lot of photos in your Lightroom catalogs. 
The next tip we're going to dive into has to deal with how to clean up and organize your photos in Photo Raw. Photo Raw is great for browsing, culling, and organizing photos. There's a few ways you can cull through your photos. First, you can hover over your photos and you will see different options to rate them. You have your star ratings and you can click this box to rate with colors. You also have your like and dislike. What I like to do when I'm culling through my photos is I like to select them and make them full size. Photo Raw has an incredibly fast browser so you can view your photos instantly. A great tool to use when culling is to select the auto advance option from the photo menu here. This will allow you to rate and then instantly be taken to the next photo, which will save you a lot of time when culling and rating. I like to use the 1 and 5 keys to rate my photos. As you can see by hitting the 1 and 5 keys, I'm auto advancing to the next one to rate. You can also use 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0 to rate them different colors, and use P to heart your photo or X to dislike your photo. If you go back into grid view by selecting this icon here, you'll see that the photos are rated. What I like to do now is I like to head down to the sort options and I like to select sort by rating and then select descending. The highest rated photos now are going to be on top and the lowest rated ones are going to be on the bottom. So if we want to organize even further, we can quickly create subfolders for them. If you want to create a subfolder, just simply select the photos you want and right click and select add subfolder. You can easily rename your subfolder to whatever you want. I'm just going to name this one beach trip. My subfolder isn't going to show up at the top here because of how I have my sorting. So if we just undo the sorting back to custom and select ascending, we have our new subfolder on top. Now if we go into the subfolder itself, there's our photos we had selected. Another quick way to stay organized is to quickly rename. To rename your photos, just select which ones you want to rename, right click, then head to Rename Files. Here you can in-depthly rename your group of photos using different controls. So for this group of photos, I want to rename it Beach Trip, and I also want to add numbers at the end. So I can use the text option here to name it Beach Trip, and to add numbers, I'm just going to hit the Add button here, use the drop-down menu to find Serial Number, and now I can type in whatever number I want. I'm going to use 1. If I select Apply, all of the photos will be renamed to Beach Trip with corresponding numbers after. For my next tip, I want to show you how to use cataloged folders. What cataloged folders do is they create a cache of your image preview files and their metadata. Essentially, the photos and metadata are stored in a small media cache that allows you to browse through large, high-quality previews faster. It allows you to view all your images in subfolders within your cataloged folders. Your metadata is also stored, so if you have large libraries of folders, you can search for metadata and keywords instantly across all of your catalog folders to save time finding photos. So if we have a directory of our hard drive here, and say we want to catalog this folder here, we can either right-click the folder or folders and select Add to Catalog Folders, or what I like to do is simply select the folders we want and we can drag them into this catalog folders section here. You're going to get a notification giving some information on what the catalog folders are doing. I'm going to select Add. And now my folders are in the catalog folders. You'll notice that these loading icons pop up to show that they are caching the image preview files. Once one completes, you can go into that folder, and if you look at your photos and browse through them, you can see how fast it is using those previews. You can instantly browse through photos with no lag time. The next tip I want to share with you is how you can use albums and smart albums to keep track of your photos. You can use these to organize sets of photos for a portfolio or maybe even a project. I have a folder of photos from a shoot I'm working on now and I want to create an album for it that I can easily access when I'm working on other things. To make it an album, simply click and drag it into the album section of your side pane here. And you can easily rename it whatever you want. I'm going to name it Project. Now your album is easy to find and access. You can also use the Smart Albums feature. Smart Albums allow you to create albums of photos based on criteria you create, such as camera type, shutter speed, rating, and much, much more. Smart Albums are only going to work through your catalog folders, so make sure you have catalog folders before making a Smart Album. 
So if I want to make a smart album, all I need to do is go to my album section here and select create smart album. Now you can use your own criteria to make a custom album. Let's name this first one smart album. I'm going to make mine find photos with an aperture of 2.8. And to add a criteria, just hit the plus button. I also want the album to find images that are raw files. So let's select file type and then select raw. And if we hit OK, it'll instantly make an album for us. If we go into that album, we can see that all of the photos match our criteria. The last tip I want to share with you is how to move around to the different modules once you have found your photo that you want to edit. So I have my photo selected here that I want to edit. To take my photo into the other modules for editing, I can either go up to File and select from these options here to choose which module, or the fastest way is to just go over to your sidebar here and select which module you want to take your photo into. If you select a module, you will be taken there, and once you're in that module, you'll notice the icon is highlighted. If you want to go back to Browse, just select the Browse icon. You can transfer between any of these top five modules in any order. The Browse module is where you will be browsing through and finding photos, mainly doing your organizing and culling. Develop is where you can apply tonal, color, and local adjustments such as exposure and saturation. Effects is where you can apply over 25 stackable and maskable, fully editable filters to customize your photo's look. The Layers module will allow you to use layers to composite and blend other images, objects, and textures together. Resize will allow you to customize resizing options and prep your photo for printing. To open up an HDR photo, or Pano, you need to have your sets of photos that will be merged and processed selected before these are selectable. What I like to do when first editing a photo is I like to take it into develop. That's where I make all my tonal and color adjustments. Once I have my basic look, then I like to take it into effects for the finishing creative touches. Those are my five tips for setting up On One Photo Raw. If you have a tip, please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.